Offensive line deep dive here, guys. And before we get into the numbers, I have a question for you. Each of you go around the horn. Jay, we'll start with you. We'll end with Bull. Okay. What do you think the Browns' offensive line has been worse at this season, run blocking or pass blocking? I would think it's pretty close. They've been equally bad, but I think their run block has been particularly bad. G? Yeah, I'm, I'm, as think I, of all the long runs they had. They were I, all cutback runs. As I, as I look down, I think they're really bad at, um, in, in run blocking. I think they're horrible. Jason? I think I know the answer because Mike and I were texting a little bit this morning, so okay. I'm, I'm going to say run blocking. Oh, okay. I, and it's, it's funny. I was going to say run blocking. I'm shocked <clears throat> because you guys have been, you two have been talking all week about how this team was made to be run blockers, and now you're saying they're worse against the run. Well, I think they were. I mean, when you have Nick Chubb and you're building yeah. a line, you are building a line on the run I, block But side. I expected you guys but, to say passing. Well, before. listen, I, the, the answer if I had a blindfold over my face would be, well, certainly they're better at run block, but I can't take the block. I'm watching, and what I'm seeing is uh, yeah. what they're supposed to be good at, yeah. they haven't been. I'll say, so. I, but that's what I thought, run. So we're a clean sweep here, Mike. So we're going to present the numbers. Okay. And we're going to revisit that exact same question afterwards. All right. Okay, so we're going to do it like this. And we'll start. The three systems I use for certain graphics, and it's going to be the first one we see, comes from ESPN, PFF, and SIS, which is a sports information system. Does all the uh, analytics. Ben Walwin puts it all together. Right. And we're going to start with the Browns' run-blocking composite score. So this takes from three different sources. The top score is 100. That's the best. According to PFF, the Browns offensive line, regardless of which five guys it is, that unit has graded as a 21 overall through four weeks, according to PFF and run blocking. ESPN is at a 40. SIS is a 56. That is 25th overall in the league. Now, before we move to the next slide. What is 25th overall? Their total composite score, which is a 39. Okay, so their yeah, total that's what composite of a 39 is so, 25th. In the so league. they rank 25th out of 32. Yeah, out of 32. So the number correct. that we're not seeing oh. there is the aggro or the, the, so the, the composite. The average. Are you averaging okay. those? Like, did you average exactly. the 21, yeah. 56? That's what he's doing. Okay. Yes. So that's the Mike, average. Yes. All three of those scores are based on the 0 to 100 scale? Correct. So that's kind of weird that, like, You'll see some big variations I mean, depending that's on the system. huge variations. Yeah. Yes. And that, that well, is Well, again, we talked about this not being a science. It's not a science. I mean, it's just not. Yeah, and that's now I is... think SIS weighs more on statistics, where PFF weighs more on eyeballs. Am I right? Yeah, PFF's the SIS system is simply numbers. Yes. It's not a single human eyeball. It's like the BCS in college football. Exactly. Okay. As opposed to so the other fraudulent. two, which takes SIS. Well, fraudulent. I mean, you can glean something from it, but what you're not look, it's it's just what we learned from Sam on, yeah. earlier this week. You, if you just looked at the box scores, you lose all context. That's right. That's what the SIS number yes. is. They're strictly crunching numbers. And, and, and the and, SIS is the highest of the three and, numbers and, and, for the Browns. And, and, and keep that right. in mind for when we see pass blocking. And, okay. and, and offensive line play is the trickiest of all because most people don't watch offensive line. Most people don't even know offensive line. Most people don't know how to watch offensive like, line. Yeah, they don't what know are they doing at. up there? Like yeah. they just yeah. Did you give up a sack or no? So right. that's the composite scores. Now, here's the deep dive into the run blocking from the offensive line. And this I found fascinating. Yards before contact, an important stat leading mm-hmm. to any good running back. Uh, you can take it here, full Steve. In 2020, the Browns' offensive line averaged giving their running backs 2.39 yards per carry before oh. contact. That was 12th in the league. In 2021, same number, 3.39. It was 10th. In 2022, it was 2.48, which is fourth. This year, they're currently ranked sixth at 2.72. However, Ford's 69-yard run against Pittsburgh, he was untouched. Right. If you take that one run out of the equation, the number drops to 2.06, which ranks 27th out of 32. Now, I know it's four games. That's one why run, one run one has run such means a dramatic a skew. Exactly. So, so far this season, outside of one run, and I know it's not fair to take yeah, you one can take run that out of the out. equation. If you took... The, the reason that's not fair, Mike, is because if you took one run off of every team, it might lower well, everybody. There are actually some analytic systems that do this. They top, take the, 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 the best the three out, the worst three out, yeah. and then look at everything else. I, I'm curious. So there's 100 – real quick. So at that yeah. number for the 2.72, 103 carries. So if okay. you take one – you're still looking at a uh, sample size of 102 carries. So 25 carries 2.06 yards per contact. So they've uh, actually yards been very good. Contact. No, it's 27th in the league. I'm sorry. The 2.06 without the run. 
It's very uh, bad. Again, but but again, that's not fair because if you took out that one run from every other team. Yes, where take out ranked? every team's home run run. Oh, yeah. Granted, run I was just giving you guys context. Right, okay. Right, and you can see the difference. What one run does, it drops it by right. 0. .6 yards. Mike, I'm is, curious. Yes, sir. Did you separate the um, the yards per contact with Nick Chubb and the runs without Nick Chubb by any chance? I did not, but that I could actually hard pull that do. up. I, would I, be I do curious have a about that, spreadsheet with that. Let me okay. get to that at the very end, right, and yeah. we'll revisit that only because I have to pull okay. up a, a spreadsheet. All right, we'll go to the next one. Now we're going to talk pass block before we get to individuals. Now remember, SIS was the highest graded score when it came to run blocking. Right. Now in the composites for the pass blocking, SIS looks at this in a completely different light. Their overall composite score between ESPN, PFF, and SIS is a 71 in terms of protecting the passer. That ranks 11th in the NFL. PFF gives them an 82. ESPN gives them a 92. And SIS, which we've mentioned before, is strictly numbers yeah. and analytics, gives them a 48 for an 11 Whoa, what overall. Whoa, you mean simply? I mean, PFF is using analytics as well. But they have eyeballs as well. It's yeah, like the BC. Right. SIS is just numbers. There's yeah. nothing to do with the human so, evaluation. What this tells me at this point is that there's actually a massive gap between the Browns pass blocking and run blocking, which I didn't think was the case. 11th in the composite in pass blocking, 25th in the composite. Well, in run yeah. they must, I mean, PFF and ESPN, they must be top five pass blocking. Just those two. Uh, I can tell you real quick. <clears throat> Pull it up real quick. Uh, according to Certainly ESPN. ESPN yeah. yeah. And here's this chart right here. In the run blocking composite for ESPN, oh, it just ranks them by composite. I apologize. All right. But I can well, do quick mental math. But you can see based on the numbers that they're on ESPN and PFF, the Browns are, are clearly in the top, at the very least, top they're seven They're ninth eight. on ESPN and pass block. Ninth on ESPN. Okay. Wow. And what about at a PFF? 92? Oh, no, no, no. That was PFF, ninth. On ESPN, they are. It's got to be top five. Third. Third. Okay. Third. Behind All right, so. Kansas City. <gasps> <clears throat> and so the Browns are pass blocking a lot better than we think they are. According to ESPN. Yeah. And PF. And I think my other takeaway is, yes, they're pass blocking a lot better than we thought. Yeah. But the other thing was uh, the gap between pass block and run block is a lot bigger than I thought. Yeah. I mean, I thought both were mid to below and they were going to be close, but the block run block would be worse. It's It's – Opposite ends of the spectrum. Here's what I'm wondering with the run blocking grades. Does anything, does the tailback have any impact on it whatsoever? Like, are you looking strictly at the blocking schemes no, or I'm, the result yeah, of the play? I, I would think the running back does have. Uh, it does. I would assume it does. SIS yeah. definitely and when, does. And from, and from my experience, when you grade offensive and defensive linemen, they take no account of what happened with the play. Like, well, if, 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 say, for instance, we watching film, we don't even watch the running back. The back's gone. No, so, based on that, yes. But in terms of yards before contact, the running back factors in. Because if the run, yeah. if, if you have a running back like Nick Chubb, who's going to be way more decisive than, than these inexperienced backs like Jerome Ford, well, he's going to get going quicker, which makes it harder for the team to make that contact earlier. And you know the saying? back that just makes guys miss. Yeah. If you if you yeah. make if you put your foot in the dirt and you get to a corner before someone else because you have the speed to do that. Yeah. Like a Sean or a Shan or however he's pronouncing his name now. A Chan. A Chan. Like, you know, I imagine that he's he can do that as well too. So the Jerome Ford sixty nine yard run against Pittsburgh, he was not touched. However, but he did not the, follow out what that play was supposed to be. The play was not necessarily blocked properly either. He no, had nowhere to go. Right. It, was a, it was a run to the right. Right. And he so ended up cutting I have it all a the hard time giving the the line credit for no, that. He gets when credit that for that. When that was all the back. Right, yeah. right. I mean, and we've seen a lot of Nick Chubb, Chubb's runs are the same thing. Right. Yeah, he, you know, the play was clearly designed to go to the right. Yeah. He quickly recognized, oh, that's not happening, and just immediately takes off the other it way. It goes and he's both gone. ways. There are times when the offensive line blocks properly and the back doesn't see the hole. You're right. It does go back. On the and other that's side, more, and it that's goes more, the same way. And that's much more likely to happen with a Jerome Ford than a Nick Chubb. In that, my mind, that yes, because Nick Chubb always seems to I make the right I can't imagine Nick decision. Chubb's missing many well-blocked poles. Yeah, he does. You know? So let's talk about the pass blocking thing real quick. So they overall graded out well. But when you look at the other side of the numbers. I don't know. Did the run grade out well? No, the run pass. did not grade out well. I thought you said overall they, they graded the out well. Overall graded out well is pass. Oh, oh the pass block, okay. yes. 
Some of the numbers are weird. Now, Browns quarterbacks this season, these are all quarterbacks with at least 30 pass attempts, which eliminates guys who have just played garbage time. Essentially right. one start. Right. DTR had 3.23 seconds before he released the ball in the game against Baltimore. Now, this is out of quarterbacks with at least 30 pass uh, attempts this season. It's the second highest time to yeah, throw in the entire NFL. Yeah. Deshaun Watson, one below. Third, 3.14. You combine those together. The average of a Browns quarterback to throw this season is 3.19 seconds. Now, That's you could look at that two different ways. Yeah. Are they holding on to the ball too long? Yes. Is the offensive line actually giving them more time to throw than we give them credit for? Is that elusiveness from the quarterback? Are they not being confident in their first reads? Is Kevin Stefanski calling plays that are taking too long to develop? It's probably a combination of all the above. Or the wide receivers just aren't getting separation. That also is that yeah, also I, could I, be a factor. I think the I think the DTR you got to just completely take out of it because it's it's the the reasons for that is very different. He he was in over his head. He didn't really know what the hell he was doing. But that time to throw shows you he had time. Yeah, he was getting he had time. time. Right, right, and that a lot of the Brown sacks are on the quarterback for holding the ball. I, well. We've kind of we've yeah. suggested that all year. Yeah, I mean, I'll go back to what I said last year. When they moved from Jacoby to Deshaun, a lot of the linemen were used to the ball coming out faster. Yeah. And when right. Deshaun and, – and this isn't a knock on Deshaun. This is part of what makes him great. You're right. Is the fact he can hold it, let things develop, let right. things play out. And buy extra out time with his feet. Buy, yes. Word. But, when you, but, when you're, but when you're a lineman – it doesn't feel that way. You're <laughs> right. going 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Where's the ball? Why isn't the ball out? Right. Yeah. So it's it's harder for the lineman to adjust to that yeah. type of style, but it, it it's just how he is. Like that's part of what makes him great. Yeah. That's you know when I've mentioned a, f- a number of times. Well, the Bengals went to the Super Bowl with a bad offensive line, so maybe the Browns can do the same thing. The thing is, Joe Burrow. I don't know about this year because this year's been a mess. But until this year, he's always been top two or three in terms of le- least amount of time holding the ball. Right. And when you have a, a, a leaky offensive line, you've got to get rid of the ball quickly. Yeah. Now, he's got better wide receivers that are getting open more often than the Browns guys are. But still, they've got to get rid of the ball quicker. I think that's part of it. Especially because even though, even though clearly the offensive line in pass block is doing better than we think, but Jed Wills, I'm guessing, isn't. He's clearly the next. weak link. Now, one of the one of the reasons I also look at I look at how many times people are in motion. <clears throat> when you look at the Cleveland Browns, you look at the top teams <gasps> with guys in motion, pre-snap and post-snap. You look at the Kansas City Chiefs. You look at the Miami Dolphins. You look at the Chargers. They're all in the top ten. Those guys use motion before the snap, after the snap, to get their guys in good looks. When you watch the Browns, they come out and they're probably middle of the pack, the lower in the league and motioning guys moving them around. If you look at it, they come out with, you know, 13 personnel. They come out with 11 personnel, and guys are just, you know, on the line of scrimmage. And when you watch the games, and I go back and watch the Bengals, I go back and watch the Ravens games, even Tennessee to a certain extent. Tennessee plays some zone, and they found some things they can exploit. But when you watch the Ravens game, and you watch some of these other games, the corners are quick twitch athletes that can deal with whoever you got. DPJ, Elijah Moore, they're, they're taking man-on-man coverage. And then when you look at some of the concepts they're trying to run, you're looking at high-low concepts where you're trying to influence a linebacker to either throw it, make them make a decision and throw the ball before, in front of them, behind them. Those things take time to develop. Like, you, if you want to run a high-low concept and you got the ball going down 12, 13 yards down the field, you, you got to let it develop. And the problem is they, they don't have any gimme, simple, quick, Cherry picked stuff that every team runs, right? And it's just too hard to run those plays if you're not creative. Well, you said enough. on the catch 22 or the on, on the all 22 that you noticed that it, it, all day long, Ninjoku was running open. Yeah, if you did, some of that bread and butter stuff, he would chip, and they were actually even helping. Uh, on Jed Wills, they kept uh, they kept uh, uh, you know David and Joker in, and he would chip and then release, and right then he's open. Like if you get it to him now in, in space, <coughs> he got five six yards, and you can that's the bread and butter. But when your when your progression is, if your coaches are telling you we look to DPJ right here on the shallow cross, that's one. The dig is two to Amari Cooper, and then three is the check down. He's not even looking at David. He's not getting to it because, to your point, it's all happening too fast. It's too fast yeah. for all that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like a blur going by him. All right, what's I your want, next I one? want to bring up one more thing. Steve, you pull the graph back up. 
On 11.6% of Browns dropbacks this year, it's resulted in a sack. That's sixth in the league. The Giants are at 17.2. This is a Patrick Mahomes stat I found, but I want to throw it in here just because it's going to blow your guys' mind. Deshaun Watson, for comparison, has been sacked on 25% of the dropbacks he's been pressured, which is right around league average. So 25% of the time, there's pressure if he takes a sack. Yeah. When Patrick Mahomes gets pressured, he gets sacked 3.6% Because he's times. so good at getting Just, out of the absurd. pocket it, and It has nothing to do with this, field. but it was the most absurd that I found out of all of these. You know, that's interesting. That might be the answer to why he has sort of cracked the code as the NFL's best quarterback. Because, And I know Lamar can do that too, but I think Patrick has the better arm. But we saw it on the Sunday night game on the third and 22, in which, by the way, the referees missed a clear holding on oh, that Kansas holding, City. That holding was oh, crazy. my God. He held that guy oh, all the way down the field. Slow, man. They missed that. But on third and 22, everybody's got their man. And we talked about this on why you don't necessarily want to play man with a running quarterback. All of the corners and safeties had their backs to him. By the time they knew he was running, he was at the first down line. Yeah, yeah. And, and right. I think that stat right there drives home maybe more than any other, why this guy is just so elite. He just well, doesn't take sacks. On the flip side of elite, we got to talk about 71. Yeah, this is tough. And there's two graphics. We'll do them both, and then you guys can react. We'll start with the PFF grades, which, once again, we have proven is not a perfect science, but it's really the only apples-to-apples apples <laughs> comparison where you could rank up other guys you're not watching. So There's no better way to... Unless you're watching every player on every play individually, there's nothing better in my opinion, but go ahead. So overall, he has a 45.4 grade this year. That ranks 95th out of 104 qualified tackles. His pass blocking wow. grade, a 53.8. That's 74th out of 104. Uh, one of those pass blocking tackles did not actually uh, block on a run play. His 44 run blocking grade is 101st <gasps> out of 103. He's allowed 18 pressures through four games. That is four and a half pressures per game. He's wow. on pace to allow 77 pressures this season. Now, Bull's going to ask, well, what's the context? What's the most pressures that guys allow per season? Well, last year, Ed Ingram of the Vikings led the league with most pressures allowed, 63. 14 oh less God. than Wills is on pace for. In 2021, Alex Leatherwood, who's now on the Browns practice squad, <laughs> led the league in pressures allowed with 67. Oh 10 God. fewer than he's on pace for this season. In 2020, Jawan Taylor, the new right tackle for the Chiefs, Led the league with 58 pressures allowed. And in 2019, Nate Solder of the Giants led the league with pressures allowed with 56. So even in the last four years, the yeah. most pressures allowed is 10 fewer than Jed Wills is on so pace it's to allow. He's on pace to not season. just be the worst in the last five years. He's on pace to be the worst by a lot. It might be the worst ever because we've both <gasps> thrown so much. You know, who knows? <laughs> Mike, how does he compare to the rest of the Browns at this point? The rest of the Browns linemen? You we'll get that? to them. We're going player by player, so we'll get to that in one sec in terms of pressures allowed. I have that for all five. Could you tell lines. me just? It so is he, significantly more. He's, so, he's allowed 18 pressures? Correct. The next highest is eight. And now, now, so what about the other four guys combined? Is it more than 18? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, but, well, there's four other guys. And, and real quick, before G, you go, I got one more, two more things on Jed Wills. So he's allowed 36.7% of the pressures that the Browns as a team have allowed. That's the third highest individual pressure rate compared to their team you in would, the entire yeah, NFL. You would expect that it would be 20% for all five guys. Exactly. And, I mean, exactly. if all things were equal. Right, right, right. And so he's allowing the pressures almost of almost double. two. Yeah. yeah, right. And, and then wow. one last stat, and I'm not exactly sure the formula PFF uses for their pass block efficiency rating. Trent Williams and Panay Sewell of the Lions – both have a hundreds. They lead wow. they lead the league through four weeks in pass block efficiency. Jed Wills is a ninety three point <gasps> seven, which ranks eighty second. So even a six point gap from ninety four essentially to a hundred drops you down eighty. Eighty spots. second out of how many? A hundred and one. Is that is it, I'm just guessing that the way they're getting to that number is how many pressures you allowed per dropbacks. Right. And the way you get to 100 is you have allowed zero pressures on the year. And, and remember, if you're 82nd, <clears throat> that means you're a lower tier third tackle. That's what you should yes, be. Yes, not a, not a starting left a tackle. A lower tier. Well, that's counting guard centers, everyone, right? That 101. No, no, that's just tackles. That's just, that's tackles. just tackles. That's just, just tackles. oh my yeah. god. So that and, and that's your left tackle. You're that means starting. you're a subpar third stringer. Now, now yeah, you're a backup. Now here's what. And I'm, that's why when I said on Monday. This line's going to get someone hurt. Yeah. Hey, um, I'm going to say this, and, and, and Andrew Barry has to answer for this, bro. Yeah. Like, like, it's not the fact that you draft him and you whiffed on that. 
It's the fact that you gave him a fifth well, year. Well, it's what we said to Chris what, Rose like, yesterday. Like, You're what, doubling down on what, a bad what, mistake. Like, what, what are you watching that says this is okay? He's like, getting worse, though. Like, I, that's the, it, regressing. He, right. he wasn't this bad as a no, rookie. No, to like, your point earlier this yes, year, like, he was manageable. Yes, I he thought is he was, not manageable I thought right his now. rookie season was the only year he was okay. I thought he was serviceable as a rookie, yeah. and he's gotten a little worse each year, and now he's, he's falling off a bad cliff. As he's falling off a cliff. Yes. Yeah. And then – Why can't – why aren't they seeing this? Oh, they are. And then you, you can't proceed like this, Jay. But, Someone's you're going to hurt your two hundred thirty million dollar yeah, quarterback. Yeah, but no, he compounded fair. it by giving Jack Conklin a deal when they knew he was hurt, injury prone. Yeah. Knew it. So the you you now have an albatross at your tackle position, and you're trying to figure out how to keep your two hundred and thirty million dollar quarterback upright with a shoulder injury. Yeah. Good luck with that turnstile. In, in, in the whack-a-mole game, yeah. last year it was the defensive tackles. This year it's the offensive tackles. Are we getting to – are we doing the <laughs> trades conversation soon? We probably will save that for Monday. I'm okay. guessing time-wise it will be a Monday conversation. Man. Because they need a left tackle, in my mind, more than they need a running back. 